Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be a commentary on the book of Isaiah. This is going to be the introduction. The book of Isaiah is the most quoted book of the New Testament that I know of. There is a great deal of prophecy in the book of Isaiah. Uh, some of it has yet to be fulfilled. And what's interesting is the Bible has 66 books. If, you're, if you look at the King James Bible, the so-called Protestant Bible, and Isaiah has 66 chapters. Well, the first 39 chapters of Isaiah is generally a message of judgment and condemnation. And then from 40 through 66 is more of a soft message of forgiveness and reconciliation. And for this reason, uh, so-called Bible scholars, and I use that term loosely, who supposedly, they're, they call it the higher criticism, I call it the lower criticism, because it comes from below and comes from the pit of hell, but they'll try to tell you, to convince you, that Isaiah chapters 1, uh, 1 through 39 was... Isaiah, and then 40 through 66 was somebody else that possibly claimed to be Isaiah or another Isaiah, but they failed to realize that the, um, the reason it changes is because you're going from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. And what's really, I find, totally interesting is that the when you go by the numbered chapters of Isaiah, it has a reference to the number of the book in the King James Bible. For example, Isaiah 1 has a reference to Genesis. Isaiah 2 has a reference to Exodus. And then when you get to Isaiah 66, well, go to Revelation. You got a new heavens and a new earth. Isaiah and in the book of uh, Revelation. So, now I took a, um, a class, an entire Bible college class on the book of Isaiah. Of course, it was, you know, 20... Well, maybe not 20, but it's probably 15, between 15 and 20 years ago. And uh, it was a graduate level class, you know, on the master's degree. And because uh, Isaiah, I consider Isaiah among the top 10% most difficult books in the Bible to understand. Um, Isaiah is in some aspects, very similar to the book of Revelation. You could take one chapter in Revelation, it would be talking about the present, and then it would go back to the past, and then it would point to the future, all in the same chapter. Now, Isaiah does the same thing, sometimes. One of the things is, is really wild, is... The original Bible, uh, the original scriptures, like the Old Testament was in Hebrew, the New Testament was in Greek, but it wasn't until, I think, William Tyndale, you know, the guy that died to give us the scriptures in the modern language, uh, I think he was the one that divided the Bible up it was either him or possibly 
uh, John Calvin who did it with the Geneva Bible where they gave uh, chapters and verses because the Bible wasn't like that in the beginning it was just you had the book you know the book of Isaiah you wouldn't go oh go to Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 6 no or I'm uh, you just wouldn't do that so might have been Tyndale now, William Tyndale um, was captured by the priests, and believe it or not, it wasn't the, the uh, Jewish priests, it was the Catholic priests, and they took his Bible and uh, put a bundle of sticks under him, tied him to a stake, and then used his Bible to light the pages on fire to light the sticks on fire and they burned him alive and before he uh, and as he was dying before he died he said Lord open the eyes of the King of England and guess what King James not too long afterwards authorized the 1611 what they call the authorized version because it was authorized by King James who had absolutely nothing to do with the translation other than compiling the scholars together and they were in three different groups and they were of different belief systems somewhat I think he had Puritans and uh, Anglicans which the Anglican church back in the days of King James are not like they are today. Today the Anglican Church is basically Catholicism light. Um, in the United States we call them the Episcopal Church. And a lot of people do not know it, but if you are a, a priest in the Episcopalian Church, you can switch over to become a priest in the Catholic Church. And there are a number, a few priests in the Catholic Church that are married because they got married when they were in the Episcopal Church and then they switched over to become Catholics because they recognize each other's uh, clergy. And believe me, the Church of Rome today is not the same Church of Rome that Paul book, wrote the Book of Romans to. So, I know I uh, rag on the uh, the Chosenites, but uh, I'm no fan of the uh, the Vatican either. So, but um, and oh, and the uh, the Catholic Bible, when they put the um, the Apocrypha in there, like Tobit and all that other stuff, Bell and the Dragon, it totally messes up the continuity of Isaiah with the New Testament as far as the the chapters corresponding to the books so like I said you got Isaiah 1 corresponds to Genesis Isaiah 2 to Exodus Isaiah 3 uh, Leviticus when you go to the last chapter, 66, Revelation, it's just utterly amazing. And somebody pointed out that the, uh, what the Hebrew Jews, what they call the Tanakh, which is, uh, they consider the Torah the first five books of the Bible. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But the uh, Tanakh is the uh, the Psalms and the major prophets and the minor prophets. Uh, the minor prophets are like Jonah, and the major prophets are like Isaiah and Jeremiah. But it's it's what we call the Old Testament. And um, I know I'm tough on the Chosenites, but I'm positive that God has a remnant in there somewhere it's just you know it's like looking at 700 club in the tbn 
and your John Hagees and your Olsteins and, uh, and saying that they represent all Christians. No. And uh, same thing with the Chosenites. I'm sure God has a remnant of people in Jewry because they have they do have Bible believing Jews. They're a very, very small minority. Very small minority. But they have to exist. God has his remnant. Always does. Matter of fact, when the uh, Great Tribulation starts and people have to pick uh, dying for their faith or denying Christ and taking the mark of the beast, you're going to watch these millions of churchgoers dwindle down to the thousands, I'm sure. So, uh, all right, let's take a look at a few things. Now, there are um, people that call Isaiah the miniature Bible for just that reason. You know, you got 66 books in the Bible, 66 chapters in Isaiah. Uh, between, once you get out of Isaiah 39 chapter and you go to the 40th chapter, the tone changes, just like the New Testament, just like the the uh, book of Matthew, which is the 40th book in the Bible. Uh, but there is a site that I found doing some research, and, uh, you know, I've got a decent memory for the Bible stuff. The Lord's blessed me with that. But I did have to do some research, and I found IsaiahMiniBible.com really looks pretty good. I, I just kind of looked at it for about 10 minutes, but everything that I saw was pretty good. Um, some of it I already knew from the uh, class I took in Bible college, which wasn't bad, really. The class wasn't bad. Um, I was surprised. Some of the stuff they taught me in Bible college, like dispensational theology, uh, you know that from Schofield. Uh, no thank you. I don't want that garbage. Um, I hate using fancy Bible words, you know, like dispensational theology. I hate that. Uh, soteriology, uh, study of salvation, eschatology, study of last things. I, I don't use that because, let's face it, I'm not teaching people that went to Bible college. And, and it's sort of like doctors and lawyers. They use these big $20 words so they can charge you a fortune, you know, so they can justify uh, charging you 350 bucks an hour for something that takes them five or 10 minutes, you know. All right, let's take a look at some interesting things here. I'm going to take a look at IsaiahMiniBible.com, and I'm going to post a link so if anybody wants to uh, take a look at it, and I'm going to turn this into a playlist. Uh, very, very, Isaiah is going to be a challenging book. And unless the Lord's with me, it won't be very good. Um, Isaiah is a tough book. Like I say, it's in the top 10% most difficult, in my opinion. Uh, this... Isaiah Mini Bible, something that I did not know, uh, I think it's a he, points out that uh, the way the Hebrew, the, the way the uh, Bible-believing Jews lay out the Bible, it's not in the same order as the King James. It's different. But yet Isaiah has a reference the same way that it does the King James. And I'll use this website to point that out when I get to it. Because I didn't know that. So I thought that was really interesting. So, All right, let's take a look at some things. All right, here are some facts about the Bible. God used approximately 40 different people to write down the Bible. The Old Testament was written 
before Christ, obviously. From approximately 1,500 years before Christ to 400 years before Christ. And some people will argue with me, but uh, the New Testament was written from approximately sometime after, shortly after uh, Christ's death to approximately up to uh, 100 years after the death of Christ. Remember something, when you see a BCE and CE for a dating system instead of BC and AD, know that you're dealing with an antichrist because that's how the antichrists use it. When they say CE, they mean common error, era, or the common error because uh, they want you to think that Christ was a common thing. And before, BCE means before the common era. Personally, I tell them, oh no, that's not what BCE means. BCE means before Christ's era, and CE means Christ era, E-R-A. So, uh, according to this site, it says the prophet Isaiah wrote uh, near the middle of the 1600-year time period. So, Isaiah was written approximately 750 B.C. to 700 B.C., and um, the thing is, the Lord had to be in control because, you know, Isaiah, you know, if Isaiah was just a guy writing a book claiming God did it, how come all the prophecies that he wrote came to pass and would come to pass, you know, about 700 years later? So... Okay, uh, Wycliffe wrote his Bible in 1382 A.D. He made divisions with the chapters. And then what I read here is um, the Geneva Bible was the first Bible to use verse divisions in 1560 A.D. So, I yeah. Now, supposedly, uh, there was, they found uh, in this IsaiahMiniBible.com, he mentions that they found a complete scroll of the book of Isaiah and that it matches what we have in our Bibles today. I could believe that. Um problem is, though, with a lot of the stuff with the Dead Sea Scrolls is the you-know-who Chosenites are in charge of it. And I'll guarantee you, if I was a Hebrew scholar and I wanted to look at them, I wouldn't be allowed. So, you know, when they're in charge of everything and telling you what everything says, eh, I don't know. Now, in this um, Isaiah Mini Bible, it says there are several types of connections between Isaiah and the other corresponding number of, well, how, how do I explain this? For example, in chapter 1 of Isaiah will correspond with the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis. So, there's several types of connections this one writes he says there'll be word and phrase connections which is how I do my Bible studies uh, asking a question and then the answer will be given in, in the connection uh, then they'll make a prophecy and then the fulfillment of that prophecy will be in the connection uh, two different events connected by the same details and then subject and theme connections. So, all 
All right, with that being said, I'm going to close this out because this is just the introduction to the book of Isaiah. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'll probably do Isaiah chapter 1 tomorrow. And um, hopefully uh, I'll have time to finish all 66 books because I don't know, who knows how much time we have, how much, only the Lord knows how much time we have. I mean, I'm shocked that I'm still on the tube. I mean, really, Christ must really be protecting my channel. And like I say, if anybody wants my entire library, send me a USB drive, at least, um... I think 32 gigs would probably do the audio, uh, but 64 would be better. And then I could, because some of these Bible studies have to have video. For example, the uh, when I use the um, complete Jewish Bible showing that they turn Jesus into Yeshua, and then they turn Yeshua into the morning star, and then they show the morning star falling from heaven. In Isaiah 14, they remove Lucifer and insert morning star. So essentially, the complete Jewish Bible, and the NIV does the same thing, the NIV Bible, they have Christ, the morning star, falling from heaven. I mean... It, he, they turn him into Lucifer. I mean, I'm like, really? And we're supposed to trust these messianics? I don't think so. So, but the the NIV was the number one selling Bible uh, for at least one or two years. It outsold the King James for that year. So, and then these... I don't know if they're idiots or deceivers. I think they're deceivers, but they'll tell you, well, yeah, you King James only people, you're, oh, you're in a cult. Well, what can I tell you? I guess it's better to be in a cult than it is to have a Bible that turns Jesus into uh, falling from heaven and going into the pit of hell. What do you think? So... And then they, uh, anybody that defends the King James Bible, they'll, they mock them and call them all kinds of names. Of course, they have to call you names because they can't debate. They can't really debate the issue. They can't do it because, you know, when you show them that, you know, Christ the Morning Star has fallen from heaven and going into the pit of hell. I mean, what are they going to do? Oh, well, they have to call you names. You know, that's how it works. So, just like when you um, want to be separated and segregated like God intended, they call you a ray cyst. And uh, they got to call you names because they can't defend what they believe from the Bible. It's one thing I've noticed. They have to call you names. That's all they can do. And then hope you back down. But, uh, yeah. All righty. Well, this is Chaplain Bob. All glory, praise, honor, and glory to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, in His precious name, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Amen.